program now, Richard Marianos, a former assistant director of the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, a special agent in charge of ATF's Washington Field Division. So, uh, Mr. Marianos, thanks for joining the program today. Thank you so much for having me. So we wanted you to come on and talk about this uh, bill that Representative Lee Yancey has authored, HB 1461, which would establish a vape a registry for the state of Mississippi. Tell us what this is all about. Well, my hat's off for the pragmatic leadership of Lee Yancey and Nicole Boyd also. Uh, their work has been outstanding in trying to get these vapes out of the hands of kids that are using them at levels we've never seen before, almost of, you know, unbelievable proportions. In some cases, the vape use by these young adults is up 2,600% around the United States. And every one of these vapes, these disposable vapes, are being made by organized crime in China. They're being flooding our markets to the tune of about $100 billion a year. And I know that's something near and dear to your heart because the last time, you know, uh, we've looked, Chinese is our biggest, or excuse me, China is our biggest national security threat. So the administration is really turning a blind eye to it. They really need to understand that our greatest resource is our children, and they're being taken advantage of to the tune of billions and billions of dollars on the back of the United States. Interesting. So what what would this bill do, this registry? What are we talking about here? I, I believe, if, if not mistaken, that the bill would require uh, a report provided to the attorney general of the state of Mississippi uh, that um, those, are, those who are, are uh, furnishing these products, supplying these products, would be in compliance. Yeah, Is that 100% correct? 100% of these products, yes, you're 100% mm-hmm. correct. 100% of okay. these products are in violation of federal law. They're all contraband. What Hmm. has impressed me and what we should be proud of is Representative Yancey and Boyd taking a stand and going after these things by putting a registry together, identifying what the criminal products are, one, and two, putting in place a system for law enforcement authorities to go after them by having the Mississippi Department of Revenue as designed to go after these individuals who are putting the vapes in the kids' hands and enforcing these laws and giving our police officers and our police department the ability to concentrate on serving and protecting in violent crime. In many states, there's a crossover or there isn't a dedicated law enforcement strategy. This is something that Mississippi needs to be proud of and needs to use as an example for the rest of the nation. And I think it's a good way to start. We have to educate, we have to do some demand reduction in our schools, but it's very important that we lock up these people that are distributing them to our kids and using these vape shops uh, as points that are almost like a narcotic spot on the corner. You know what? I don't want to paint all vape shops bad. That's what's important. There's many of them that are uh, 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 they're applying the law correctly. They're doing everything okay. correctly. But there are some out there that are selling these products that need to be dealt with and need to be put out of business. Do you think they're doing so knowing that what they're doing is is uh, essentially selling illegal contraband or are they just unaware many of them are aware because the fda has sent out notices they've sent out red letters identifying the products that they can't sell which are contraband which are illegal and many of them are disregarding they just what's going to happen to me there's nobody enforcing it that's what's important right now and that's what we applaud mississippi for putting in a strategy to deal with these people so they can't turn their nose at it and they'll be dealt with with, I hope, severe fines and in some cases criminal prosecution. Okay, so you have you have 27 years, it's my understanding, uh, looking at your bio and so forth at uh, the ATF Bureau. So in your professional experience, what's the what's the major risk here? Why should we be concerned about this and and why is this legislation so important? And, and how is, I guess, does, do these products differ from the legal products that, that uh, places them in the category of posing a greater risk? You're 100% right, Gilbert. And if you would have asked me 30 years, 
is this something that I would be speaking about or interested in? I'd say no way. There's other things that are more important. Now this is important because it's the new face of organized crime. It is the new way for the Chinese to use our children as soldiers and use that money to the tune of a hundred hundreds, hundreds of billion dollars a year to back their organized crime through illegal means. Anybody who stands against these bills by Yancey and Boyd is just giving the Chinese complete authority to do whatever they want. And that's the, the danger here. Many of them that are coming across are not tested, like the industry has standards for the ones that are tobacco harm reduction devices. These are untested, they're unregulated, they're uncontrolled, they're marketed to kids, they're for kids, they're to hook kids, they're to, to addict children, and all the money is used for organized crime against the United States. Well, that's High what value I was, targets. I got you. So, the, and that was going to be my question. Do, do you feel like that, that the Chinese goal here is, in fact, to, to injure and physically harm and, and inflict physical harm, uh, be it mental or, or bodily harm, to our children, to our youth, or is it to to generate income to carry out their their other nefarious and malicious activity, or maybe combination of the two? Uh, you're absolutely right. The last statement, a combination of the two, I would totally agree with. And I say that because if you look at some of this packaging, they're geared towards kids. They're using the Simpsons. They're using different celebrity characters on these things, different hmm. flavors that only appeal to children. And that money, you, we can show as a nation that it's going directly towards organized crime and these high-value targets that are continuing pressuring the United States as a threat to our national security. So how does the supply chain work for these products? I mean, are they being manufactured in China and, and they're being manufactured again with this malicious intent? How do they get into this country and then all the way to the store shelves? 100% of every one of these disposable vapes that we're talking about is being manufactured in China. There's okay. a site, there's several sites along the internet that you can order from, bring it in, ship it in directly into the country and sell it at stores. And we have to do a better job of one, stopping the people who are bringing it into the United States, stopping the shippers into the stores and stopping the stores to the kids. And it's not an easy way it's not an easy practice. It's going to be difficult. But we have to start with a demand reduction strategy and get in front of it. We have to notify our parents, our school resource officers, our teachers need to know. We need everybody like yourself that's going to take time out to understand this problem, that it's not vapes. It's disposable vapes made in China that are preying on our children because there are products out there. And that's why I can't or will I paint the brush in its totality. Some are for demand reduction, to get people away from smoking if they choose. Yeah. These yeah. organized crime, these high value targets, making money and preying on our children. Yeah. I mean, it, this just kind of sounds like a, a modern day version of uh, the Cosa Nostra of the 30s and 40s. It's kind of what it reminds me of, except it's, it's, it's China and it's vapes. It happens to be the article uh, that's being used. And I mean, you're right. And, and again, Mississippi, you know, I'm going to continue to give them kudos, but they've developed a strategy to deal with it through registries and law enforcement. And we need people to look at your state as a gem and follow the practices you've put in place and the direction that you're going in terms of the registries and the law enforcement issues. Is, is this the architecture here, the framework of the registries and law enforcement uh, Richard, is that something you devised or, or uh, s someone uh, or other people that uh, are familiar with or work, perhaps worked in ATF have seen this problem firsthand? Is that where the, the, the idea came from? No, I wish I was smart enough to come up with something like this. <laughs> um, it's a, there's been a lot of bright minds. There's been attorneys. There's been people in government. Um, okay. There's been practitioners that have all been at the table that have come up with this strategy because they understand okay. how great the problem is. Okay. So they, they see the problem and, and understood we got to get something to, to gain control. Uh, and, and by registering, by documenting, um, we can ensure and distinguish between the contraband and the legal products and take action uh, on the contraband. 
Um, it sounds like it uh, could be a, a, a fairly sophisticated supply chain, and hopefully our, our law addresses that. we got about 20 seconds left. Last I want to leave is for parents, law enforcement officers, or anyone that's very, very interested. There's a website that's been developed by teachers, cops, um, administrators. It's www.illegalvapes.com. It's constantly Pre updated on those who are in violation in the registries. Appreciate it, Richard. Thanks they for coming on. And, and Yeah, thank you for enlightening on this uh, critical issue. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Gilbert. You have a great weekend. You too. Coming right back, folks.